Kia ora, welcome to Central News for Thursday the 21st of August. I'm Hilary Entwistle. The new gold kiwifruit variety G9 is fatally flawed. And Tauranga, Tauranga grower Mike Smith says Zespri is doing the right thing and encouraging growers to stop growing it. The high yielding sweet fruit has a problem with a shriveling of its skin, which is impacting on sales and Mike says while he's not happy about the decision, he supports Sesbury because of the adverse impacts G9 could have on the brand. Sesbury grower and Government Relations General Manager Simon Limmer says the variety's future is uncertain because of market feedback from customers, wholesalers and retailers about Gold9 fruit deterioration. In a major initiative to help New Zealand investors in 14,000 small plantation forests to meet the challenge of marketing a looming wall of wood against stiff competition, a new forestry company with major international backing has been launched in Wellington today. United Forestry Group brings major resources, expertise and a new strategic approach to maximising the value output from these small forests potentially worth $30 billion in today's dollar over the next two decades. However, the high harvesting and transport costs faced by the owners of single small forests and their weak negotiating position with buyers means the potential value of these forests may not be achieved and the final return to their owners and to New Zealand may be disappointing. The company says it is essential for New Zealand that small forest owners achieve a worthwhile return on their investment or there will be no incentive to replant these forests and New Zealand's future forestry output and earnings will not be sustainable. Waikato has named an unchanged side to take on Canterbury at Waikato Stadium this Friday. The squad of 22 has been rewarded for getting Waikato's season off to the perfect start with a bonus point win over Wellington. But go coach Johnny Walters is not dwelling on their week one effort. He says it was great to get a win on the board first up, but they have been quick to put that behind them and shift their focus to this Friday. He also says he's committed to improving on the last performance and excited to play in front of their home crowd for the first time this year. Friday's games will feature a curtain raiser, the 13th grade final at 3.30pm and the annual Junior Rugby March post from 4.30pm. Gate 4 opens at 3.15pm and other gates open at 4pm. Monitoring and enforcement staff at Waipa District Council spent the last three months of the financial year dealing with complaints ranging from the use of golf balls to the keeping of emus. Planning and Regulatory Manager Wayne Allen says often enforcement staff were being asked to get involved in issues that neighbours may have once sorted out themselves. In the last quarter, complaints were received about golf balls being hit onto residential roofs, stock crossings not being cleaned, overhanging trees, pigs in porongia and emus being kept in residential areas. There were also complaints about skateboarders in Cambridge, litter on reserves and the use of a property as a bed and breakfast. Wayne says people seem more and more reluctant to try to resolve issues between themselves. Instead, they raise these issues with council enforcement staff and they have to spend time and money sorting out problems which in the past, council may have not have had to deal with. Now for our marine forecast, west coast, Raglan, southeast 25 knots changing on Friday evening to a southwest 20 knots. Your high tide is at 7.46am. East coast, Bay of Plenty becoming a southerly of 15 knots in the morning, tending southwest at night. High tide in Tauranga is at 4.59pm. Still to come on Central News, keeping the Waikato River healthy. How to know when your child is being bullied? And of course, your weather for tomorrow. Welcome to Central News on TV Central. Healthy Rivers Plan for Change is a project overseen by the Waikato Regional Council and involves a group of key stakeholders working on ways to protect the Waikato and Waipa Rivers. The group aims to plant 10,000 trees over three years along the Waipa River Bank. Anne-Marie spoke with Healthy Rivers Plan for Change co-chair Alan Livingston, who explained how this will help to clean up our rivers. 
Well, first and foremost, it's not the uh, Healthy Rivers that's doing that. It's a, a collaborative partnership between a number of parties, which is uh, a very important aspect. And uh, uh, integral to that is the Waikato River Authority and their Clean Up Trust, um, where the government provided, um, as part of the treaty settlement, the river settlement, $210 million over a 30-year period. So that is going towards um, the planting of those trees. Obviously the community and um, various groups are working very hard in that regard and there is support from the regional council in, in there. So uh, very much a team effort to achieve the best possible outcome. The trees themselves, um, uh, by planting those uh, in riparian plantings along rivers etc, they'll um, reduce the inflow of uh, sediment and nutrients into, into our waterways. Clearly planting for um, uh, to stop uh, erosion in some of our steeper country, all of those will make a big difference. But uh, aligned with that is uh, enhancement of some wetland areas, planting in those, which will help filter those nutrients that are flowing into our waterways as well. So um, very much a, a team effort and uh, already a lot's been achieved. Given the cultural significance of the Waikato River, is it a special case? Oh, very much so, and that's evidenced by the uh, government and Waikato Tainui with their Waikato River settlement in 2007. So there is an acknowledgement that the, um, the kaitiaki, the uh, guardianship of the Waikato River is very important to iwi and at the end of the day it's very important to all of us. So it, it is a special, special case without question. The vision and strategy requires the Waikato River to be restored to Waikato Tainui tikanga is this realistic? Well look, it's a, a fantastic uh, vision to have and um, it, the river has been degraded over many years and it's going to take a good number of years to uh, restore it to the standards that we would like to see for swimming and taking of kai. So uh, it, yes it is achievable and um, <coughs> um, clearly there's going to be parts of both the Waikato and, river, uh, and Waipa rivers where we have to place extra emphasis on improving that quality. The rivers are of great significance to Māori. How are iwi helping clean up? Well iwi are a significant contributor to, the, to this and um, you know, first and foremost uh, the government with the provision of the Waikato uh, clean up fund of the 210 million, that is going towards the clean up of that in the first three years of um, that process, uh, $16 million has been provided to about 100 projects uh, throughout the length of the Waikato and, and Waipa rivers. So in that regard, they're, uh, they're contributing a huge amount. Uh, they are actively involved themselves with uh, quite a number of projects along the river. Um, and I was at Te Kawiti, uh, three weeks ago where there was a, a joint project on um, Maori land involving the local marae. Uh, dock, um, various volunteers, so it's very much uh, a partnership that they're contributing to. What are the indigenous species pertinent to the Waikato and Waipa rivers? Uh, to my knowledge there are 17 uh, native fish species uh, that have been recorded in the uh, Waikato River, um, but of course uh, with the <coughs> degradation of the river they are in isolated pockets along the river now and that includes our, our long-finned and uh, short-finned uh, eel, uh, five species of, uh, of, tuna, uh, of uh, whitebait as well. So it is a real concern in that um, some of those are becoming almost endangered, as endangered as our kiwi. What are some of the practical options for managing containments and discharges along the Waikato and Waipa rivers? Um, clearly working with uh, landowners, farmers and, and other uh, landowner sector groups industry, uh, urban centres are uh, essential to improving the discharges into our waterways. With regard to farmers who've got most of the land, um, <coughs> there's uh, riparian plantings that uh, will reduce the, um, the inflow of uh, nutrient and sediment into the river. There's uh, nutrient uh, budgets that uh, will be done to help reduce that nutrient inflow. Uh, working with industry to help uh, re reduce any inflows or the, improve the quality of inflows and similarly with urban centres with uh, their sewers and um, stormwater discharges. So those are some examples that uh, 
will make uh, significant improvements to our water quality. How much do the hydroelectric power stations impact on water quality along the Waikato River? Yeah, there's, with the Waikato River dams, the hydroelectric dams, there's, there's a plus and minus aspect to it in that it slows down the flow of the, of the water and that um, encourages algal buildup in those lakes as we've seen in the likes of Katapiro. Uh, but at the same time it slows it down so there is a sediment drop in the lakes themselves so they act as uh, massive sediment traps so there is uh, benefits and uh, detracting aspects that they provide. How has the national policy management for water quality affected healthy rivers, Waiora? Well it's been a, an important catalyst in, uh, in us carrying out that change and um, with the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Standards in 2011, it set out how we should, uh, that we should um, improve the quality of our fresh water. Subsequently, the, uh, an amendment in 2014, in August of this year, set out how regional councils have to improve that, uh, uh, that quality. And um, uh, with that, it set um, policies, rules and guidelines that uh, we have to work to to achieve those standards within uh, various catchments and in fact sub-catchments that we're working on in the, in the Waikato. So um, we then can set our own um, objectives to achieve those and um, uh, that's the, the, the very role of the um, collective stakeholder group is setting out those uh, rules and, and guidelines that we have to attain. For more information, visit waikatoregion.gov.nz forward slash healthy rivers. Coming up next, we look at the signs of bullying. Welcome back to Central News. Bullying can take on many forms, but most of us think of the schoolyard bully. As a parent, you send your child off to school, and most of us don't really know what happens to our children in the schoolyard. Know the Signs of Bullying is a new campaign researched and produced in Tauranga that helps parents identify when their child is being bullied and what to do about it. I spoke with one of the project leaders. Okay, this is just a new campaign that's been launched and it's new in New Zealand and what's happened is for the last four years we've been taking the STEAM as rugby players into schools to talk about um, you know, what kids can do about bullying and if they're being bullied. And we kind of sat around and went, oh, there's a whole part that's being missed here that if young people or children were being bullied and parents and safe adults who could actually help to make it stop, didn't actually um, recognise the signs and know what to do about it, this whole thing could just blow up and get worse. We're not going to actually be able to prevent it. So that's kind of what it came out of. Um, we got a funding round from the Ministry of Social Development and then we just started to work on this really exciting campaign. Who else has been involved with the campaign? In order to kick this off, we had we sat down with children and we said to them, these are the observable signs that children are bullied or are the bully. Tell us, do you observe this? What do, what, what do you tell us? And we went to different deciles and the children really framed this up for us. But as well as that, we went to teachers, we went to parents who we knew their children had been bullied. And I'm talking young children, like primary school age. Um, and older children as well. And then the Ministry of um, Education, Ministry of Social Development, um, the Mental Health, all sorts of agencies that work with children and parents helped us frame this up. You mentioned you went to different decile primary schools. Did you notice much difference between the deciles? Similar things coming out, but maybe um, in the, the lower decile, we did notice that the children said to us, gosh, if my dad knew I'd been bullied, he'll come, he'd come in here and he'd do this and he'd do that. You didn't quite get that at the higher decile, but there was a similar reaction to their parents' reaction. It was just given a different flick, yeah. The project has been months in the making and as part of that you interviewed primary age school children as you said in Tauranga Moana. What were some of those experiences that you heard about? I mean do we have a big problem of bullying here in Tauranga? Well yeah the, the, the stats are very high and I, I don't like sort of throwing stats around particularly but yeah it depends there's a whole there's a whole lot of children that won't even say that they're being bullied which is part of the issue so even if I gave you a stat um, but they you know there's some stat around saying one out of three but then you've got the whole 
you know, children not saying. So, yeah, it is a big problem. And But I think schools are really great in starting to really get on with it and noticing. And it's now just trying to get parents to, to come on board too. Schoolyards and growing up can be pretty tough at the best of times. So how do you define bullying, where's that line? Right, so it's not the teasing, it's not the accidental type things that just happen in a normal schoolyard. What it is, is it's deliberative, it's repetitive, and there's an intention. There's an intention to isolate and there's an intention to do harm. And it is really important to know that distinction. That repetitive element, is that a big one? Does that kind of pick away at somebody's uh, character development and their personality? and their self-worth. Yeah, totally, and that's why one of the signs is children can either respond to that in different ways. They might get more quiet or they might get aggro about it. So there's different ways that they will respond. So yeah. what are the signs to look out for that our child is being bullied? Okay, there's a lot of signs that children are bullied. Um, they could get aggressive, they could get secretive. Um, if they've been on the internet, on their cell phone, you know, unusually secretive. Um, they might have bruises or be hurt and that's unexplainable. You know, their explanation doesn't kind of ring true. Um, they they can have a change in eating patterns, sleeping patterns. They could hurt themselves on purpose. There's a whole range of things. And um, that's part of the campaign, is that you can look it up. There's actually 21 signs that children are bullied, but we only put the ones that had high observation through a survey monkey that we did, yeah. You say hurting themselves. Are we talking about primary age school children? hurting themselves. Yeah, but not we're not talking hurt themselves as in self-harm that we would think about a teenager. We're talking about hurting themselves so they don't have to go to that football game or not wanting to go to school, so pretending to be sick. Does cyberbullying open up a whole new can of worms when it comes to recognising the signs of bullying? Yeah, and it does because it's secretive and it has a whole different element. And the thing is too, with young people today and younger, even intermediate age, they've got smartphones. And what that means is the internet is now open up to them all the time, you know, it's everywhere for them. And it's very, very hurtful. And the digital footprint of what cyberbullying is goes on. But that also means there's a tracking. And for a lot of young people who have the cyberbullying as an issue, it's huge for them, for their reputation, for their self-esteem, because it doesn't go away. People, it's believable, people believe what's put out there. So yeah, it is huge. What would you recommend for parents? Do, do you want them to be controlling the use of their child's cell phone? What I think, which a counsellor said to me a few years ago actually, said it's like with a cell phone, when a child gets one or an intermediate age child gets one, they should have a provisional licence, like a car driving licence, that parents can look at it any time, pick it up, it gets put in a basket before they go to bed. Um, but at the end of the day, we actually want our children to monitor it themselves and understand the dangers themselves. So yes, monitoring, but also children have got to be self-directed themselves. We will have the second half of that interview next week where I find out what to do if your child is the bully. You can visit knowthescience.co.nz for a range of helpful tips and resources. Coming up next, how dirty are our ocean floors? Welcome back. Most of us know, watch what we put down our drains and to be careful about stormwater runoff as it all ends up in the sea. But what about solid rubbish? What about what is lying at the bottom of our harbours and our favourite swimming spots? Dive Against Debris has been going since 2011. It's a global survey of underwater marine debris. Divers remove and report the rubbish they find underwater and report it online. A local woman has organised for this Saturday, the 23rd of August, at Pilot Bay, a marine clean-up of Tauranga Harbour. Um, basically there's uh, going to be a group of divers and we're going to get in the water and just collect as much rubbish as possible, like plastics, bottles, anything we find really that shouldn't be there and that accidentally got there or purposely. This is part of Project Aware, so can you give me a little bit of history behind Project Aware? Um, Project Aware is a non-profitable environmental um, foundation that is that was formed in 1992 and pretty much they all just, they group up with divers and environmental people just to keep the waters clean and they do, um, what do you call it, um, protests about shark finning and all that sort of stuff, so. 
One dive at a time is their motto. What does that mean? Um, just sort of taking it one dive at a time about cleaning up or protecting the ocean or protecting the animals. It's always been their slogan. What makes Pilot Bay such a bad area for pollution? Well, Pilot Bay is not an exception to anywhere else in the world. Um, according to Project Aware's data, um, 22 billion tonnes of rubbish is dumped into our oceans every year, whether it's intentionally or not. And Pilot Bay just happens to be one of them. And it's all about, you know, us as well, and beachgoers, tourists, people in general. I mean, if we don't, if our rubbish doesn't go in the bins, or go home with us, and then it ends up in the ocean, really, due to the winds. There's actually quite a few organisations helping you guys out. Tell me about all of them. Yeah, well, we've got um, Dives on Taranga, and that's where I'm a student there. And um, then we've got New World sponsoring us the food, so that's real great for of them. And we've got Environmental Waste, who's sponsoring us the bin, bins, and all bin. And the council will be paying for the disposal of that. And um, Project Aware obviously is helping with all the surveys. And um, Polytech is involved, Marine Studies and Environmental Studies. So that's real good of them. The cleanup will be this Saturday at Pilot Bay in Tauranga. Now for our weather for Friday. Hamilton, the fine weather is back. It's going to be sunny with westerlies. Your expected high is 12 and an overnight low of 1. The rest of the Waikato are fine with Savalis. Pairo, your expected high is 13 and an overnight low of 2. Matamata, 11 and 2. Te Aumutu, 12 and 1. And Tokoroa, 10 and an overnight low of 0. The Bay of Plenty, Tauranga, fine with Savalis. Your expected high is 14 and an overnight low of 3. The rest of the Bay of Plenty, fine with Savalis. Your expected high to Puki is 12 and an overnight low of 4. That is the programme for today. We would love to hear from you and your feedback on any of tonight's stories. You can get in contact with us via our Facebook page, centralnews.tv, or email us at news at tvcentral.co.nz. Tomorrow night on Central News, we head along to the Science Roadshow and we answer whether the jet sprints ruined the Bay Park rugby field. Until then, I'm Hilary Entwistle and I hope you have a lovely evening. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.